there are four types of female birds gynecoid, android, anthropoid, and a rare type known as platypeloid pelvis. I will describe each type in terms of inlet, cavity, and outlet, with a comparison of the four types at the end. Regarding pelvic inlet, in gynecoid pelvis, the inlet is round shaped or slightly transverse oval. So, head engagement occurs in occipital lateral or oblique occipital anterior position. In android pelvis, the inlet is heart shaped with a narrow anterior part. So, head engagement occurs in occipital lateral or oblique occipital posterior position. In anthropoid pelvis, the inlet is anthroposteriorly oval, so engagement occurs in direct occipital anterior or direct occipital posterior position. In platypeloid pelvis, the inlet is transversely oval, so engagement occurs in occipital lateral position and asynclitism is common. In gynecoid pelvis, the sacrum is well curved and inclined backwards. This makes the sacral angle more than 90 degrees. The sacral angle is the angle between pelvic inlet and the first two sacral vertebrae. And the sacrosciatic notch is wide and sharp. In android pelvis, the sacrum is straight and inclined forward. This makes sacral angle less than 90 degrees. And the sacrosciatic notch is narrow and deep. In anthropoid pelvis, the sacrum is long and narrow and inclined backward. The sacral angle is more than 90 degrees. and the sacrosciatic notch is more wide and shallow. In platypeloid pelvis, the sacrum is short and straight and inclined backwards. The sacral angle is more than 90 degrees. And the sacrosciatic notch is slightly narrow and small. In gynecoid pelvis, the pelvic walls are straight or slightly divergent, and the ischialis spines are not prominent. And this enables internal rotation to happen easily at the level of ischialis spines. In android pelvis, the pelvic walls are convergent, and the ischialis spines are prominent. This makes internal rotation more difficult and increases the risk of persistent occipital posterior position. In anthropoid pelvis, the pelvic walls are divergent and the ischialis spines are not prominent. In platypeloid pelvis, the pelvic walls are divergent and the ischialis spines are not prominent. And so anterior rotation usually occurs late on the perineum. Regarding pelvic outlet, in gynecoid pelvis, the subpubic angle is wide, about 90 to 100 degree. It roughly corresponds to the fully abducted thumb and index finger. And the bituberous diameter is normal. I mean, it can accommodate four knuckles. These features enable easy delivery at the level of pelvic outlets. In android pelvis, the subpubic angle is narrow, less than 90 degrees. 
which roughly corresponds to the abducted index and the middle fingers. This increases the waist space of Morris, pushes the head backward and increases the risk of perineal injuries. The bituberous diameter is short, which makes delivery at the pelvic outlet more difficult. In anthropoid pelvis, the subpubic angle is slightly narrow and the bituberous diameter is normal or slightly narrow. These features make non-rotation is common with more incidence of phase to pubis delivery. In platypeloid pelvis, the subpubic angle is very wide, more than 100 degree, and the bituberous diameter is wide. There is no difficulty in delivery at the level of pelvic outlet. And finally, to summarize, in gynecoid pelvis, the inlet is round shaped, sacral angle more than 90 degree, sacrocytic notch is shallow and wide. The pelvic walls are parallel and these scale spines are not prominent. The subpubic angle is optimally wide and the bituberous diameter is normal. In android pelvis, the inlet is heart shaped. Sacral angle is than 90 degree and sacrocytic notch is narrow and deep. Pelvic walls are convergent and these scale spines are prominent. Subpubic angle is narrow and bituberous diameter is short. In anthropoid pelvis, the pelvic inlet is anthroposteriorly oval. Sacral angle more than 90 degree and sacrocytic notch is more wide and shallow. Pelvic walls are divergent and ischial spines are not prominent. Subpubic angle is slightly narrow and the bituberous diameter is normal. In platypeloid pelvis, the inlet is transverse oval, sacral angle more than 90 degree, and the sacrocytic notch is slightly narrow and small. Pelvic walls are divergent and the ischial spines are not prominent. Subpubic angle is very wide and the bituberous diameter is wide.